try to try to talk Yoda talk here, probably not successfully. But yes, it is it is a software representation of the device. Okay. Anytime you hear the word object, in general you're referring to a software representation of something. All right. And with the DOM, again, it's the software representation of the stuff that's on a web page. Here is the software representation of that. And we can then ask that object questions. We can ask this get capability function on this object is where we can ask a list of predefined questions. Does it have this capability? Does it have this capability? And so on. And based on the answers to those questions, we can then customize the page. All right. This is just from the textbook, by the way. So, again, in essence, what I do is I check this, check this. I then have an if statement to look for these conditions. According to the textbook, if this if statement is true, it's a telephone, or it has a telephone. And I can create the link to make the call. And again, the link is simply, T I, I thought it was, the other day when you asked, I thought it was T-E-L-E, -E, but it's just T-E-L. So the link has an href of T-E-L followed by plus one, four, four, oh, my phone number. I'm not sure what the plus is for. The one, if I'm not mistaken, I think the plus one together means that this is a United States number. Yeah, I, I think. And you probably don't actually need it, but it's probably good to put it in. All right. And then I have the link to call me, so when I click on that link, it, it calls the phone. Um, otherwise, if this condition is false, it simply creates the text. All right. Let's spend a minute now to look at that Werfel config file. Let me go and pull down from the server that Werfel config file. When I get accounts for you folks, I'll talk a little bit more about this. The way that you can communicate with a web server to upload your files is via a FTP program. Assuming, of course, you know your password. Just for laughs, I'm going to upload the latest change I made to make sure that that still works. Or save it. And that should still work. And sure enough, it does. Okay. I just got rid of some of the superfluous code. That way, when I upload the example, we got rid of the stuff that you don't really need. Okay. Let's look at that Werfel config file. There's some parameters that we can set regarding the error reporting and some other directories. 
probably the most critical lines are these two, where I define a directory in my web server's root folder, actually these lines, 10 and 11. That is where I supply a directory on my web server where the WERFL files live. So if I was going to go and look in that directory, that's where I'd find the WERFL files. So I can go and look and In the WERFL folder, I have all this different stuff. This is all the stuff that I downloaded when I downloaded WERFL. And I can look and I can find the actual XML file, which is big. It is 20-ish meg, if I'm counting right. And then, And it's going to load for the next 20 years. This is actually the XML that is coming from the WERFL. So this WERFL is freeware that every developer uses? There is license. Yeah, there, there's licensing. You can read the, the licensing. There is definitely a free version. I, I, I don't have the licensing information off the top of my head. We'll, we'll look it up uh, in a second. But yeah, it's, it's, it's nothing that I paid for. Um, Probably wasn't a good idea to do that. At any rate, what this is, is this is an XML file that contains the information about, let me, let me do this instead. It's, it's, Pardon me? I thought that I saw the bottom and something we that was included. Yeah, that, that's for, no, that's the, that's yeah, for that, the config yeah, that's file. I noticed that was the last yeah. thing. Here's a big old XML, XML file. And notice all it is, is let's, let's, let's pick something. Let's pick Droid X2.
this is an awfully big file. It's probably dumb of me to try to search through it like this. At any rate, we can look at some of these things and we can get a sense. It has what kind of mobile browser it has, Android Web Kit. Does it have a QWERTY keyboard? Yes. The operating system, Android. Pointing method, touchscreen. Mobile browser version, 2.3. Is it a tablet? Yes. Device OS version, 2.3, and when it was released. So, that what we were looking at was a generic Android Kim, uh, a Kindle. All right. Question. Yes. I'm thinking more of a, from a marketing standpoint. What would it be able to? Does it pull information off like location? I, I know you spoke about that in earlier classes. Or is this just the lo, just the machine itself? From from the user agent, you don't get location. Right. You would get location. You could you can map the IP address to to get the location. Yeah. But uh, for this is this is just looking at the user agent. It's just looking at the specifics of the user device. This would be more for like writing applications, uh, native apps, than it would be for developing. Well, uh, well no. Stuff. Are we writing native apps here? No. No, we're doing HTML. Right. Okay. That code that I showed you before was just plain HTML. Yeah. So no, this isn't for mobile apps. This is for writing mobile websites. Our PHP can look at this determine what the capabilities of the device is, and then we can customize it depending on whatever variable we want to look at. Right. So if it's Android, we could have a link to the Google Play Store. If it's Mac OS, we could have a link to the Apple I Store, whatever it's called, the App Store. Hey, um, based on the width of and the size of it, we can do things based on that and, and so on. So this gives us information about the parameters that we can incorporate into our PHP code to customize the HTML that we send back to the browser. There's really no need to, well, I won't say there's no need to do that uh, on an Android, but it's done totally different. You don't have an HTTP request, so you don't have a user agent. Okay. Let's look to see what kind of capabilities we can check for. All right. Here's some interesting things. Does it have support for the Canvas object? Yes, it does. So doing like HTML5 animation, um, this has support for that. Does it support Flash? And so on down the line. These are all things that we can ask, and based on that, if I have Flash on my system, all right, the server's going to know it, and I can display a Flash animation if I want to. If not, maybe I can output some just plain old images. All right, so we could do some detection that way. Let's see a list of all the capabilities that we have um, available to us in Warful. This gives a little more description of, of how the XML file is laid out, which is all well and good. But probably the most important thing is <clears throat> excuse me, um, the capabilities that you can ask for and, and the, the words that you use in asking for them. So for example, in this case, the brand, the brand name is one capability that you can ask for. It says capability, but really, a lot of these represent capabilities, but characteristics might be a better word. Because, uh, you know, I wouldn't say the brand is a capability, right? The brand's just a characteristic. So it tells us the brand name. Is it a wireless device? Is it a tablet? How do we point? Do we point with a joystick, like on the old Blackberries? Right, where you add a little, little rolling uh, button. Do you uh, point with a touch screen or whatever? Does it have a keyboard? And that's a physical keyboard, right? 
Uh, I think it says some devices come with a full QWERTY keyboard. This may say on how forms or other functions are implemented. Virtual keyboards are good enough to make this tick to true. So if it has a, a screen keyboard. Keep in mind, this, this like goes back to like old school things. So your old flip phone, all right? There's probably an entry in here for it. And we can see, again, a whole bunch of characteristics that we can test for. Canvas support. Does this feature HTML5? Canvas support. Think if you're doing an animation. All right. If you're doing an animation, some animation is done in Flash. Some animation is done in HTML5. What is, what is one kind of device that never has and never will run Flash? An iPhone, right? Therefore, but it does do HTML5. Other browsers may not do HTML5 Canvas, but they might do Flash. So I could actually, if it was that important to me, that animation, I could test to see, first of all, does it have Canvas support? If it does, then use the HTML5 Canvas element and create that. If not, does it have Flash support? If it has Flash support, then put my Flash movie on it. Otherwise, I don't know, a paragraph telling the person to use their imagination and, and imagine the ball bouncing across the screen or whatever. All right? The idea is, is we could take and we could customize the output we just have a much greater degree of control by using this capability than we would if we were using um, the simple binary of if, it's, uh, if it is um, mobile or not. Is, is AJAX supported? Do they support JavaScript? Yes. Uh, kicking this into application, wouldn't that become an incredibly complicated page because if you wanted to build one page with a bunch of different possibilities, you're going to have to write essentially, you know, true false statements for all these different little things. That could just become a really huge page of HTML. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what you would have to decide is what's important to you. All right. Because yeah, you're right. I mean, look at all these things that you can check for. All right. Um, it's doubtful that you would check for all of these. But you would check for the ones that, 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 that were important and, and what was important. Thinking in terms of what some of the important ones that you might have, you, it probably would be good to know if you're on a phone or not, right? Because you could actually add a call button that you couldn't on a desktop browser. This is where we're trying to take a mobile website, and instead of the mobile website being just a cheap imitation of a desktop website, we're making the mobile website really a mobile website, right? Uh, remember, um, you know, I think I talked about that in this class, is anytime you get something new, a lot of times it starts out imitating old stuff, right? So, you know, the first TV shows were like radio shows. The first movies were like plays. That gradually it's like, well, we can do better than that. This is a different medium. We can, we can exploit what's good about this medium. Same idea with mobile websites. When mobile websites first came out, they were just shrunk down versions of the main website. But now, with some of these tools, we can say, let's make it specific to mobile. So let's worry about the fact of whether it has a phone or not and deal with it, with it that way. So if I was going to summarize, if it has a phone would be one. I probably would be interested if it's a tablet. Because if we think through this, I now could do three versions of the web page, right? A phone version, a tablet version, and a desktop version. All right? Because if it's important to me, again, I might want to have, have more space on a tablet than I would on a typical phone. All right? But I probably don't have the kind of screen width or whatever that I would on a desktop machine. Or there's reasons to make a tablet application work a little different than a desktop would. Um, 
So to answer your question, absolutely, that's why it's important to pick and choose the aspects that are important to you in any given application. All right. There's an example in the book, and I'm not sure exactly when we're going to go over it, but the example in the book, if I'm not mistaken, says we're going to take, we're going to look at the user agent, and we're going to put the user agent in one of five categories. I think it is, um, I think the five categories are like, All bets are off, so we're going to just assume minimal, all right? A phone, a high-end phone, a tablet, and a desktop browser. So it puts them in five classes. And then based on that, it customizes the appearance, the, the, the content, and so on for those five. So you don't have a million different devices. All right, you don't have a million different possibilities. In that case, they boil it down to four or five. Uh, I can't remember exactly what. But I'm pretty sure in the, chap in the chapter about Werfel, it, it has that. All right. Again, here's some things that talk about can they play Flash video? Can they play MP4 video? Can they play WMV video? Can they play MOV video? So if you had a site that was had a video on it, that might be one of the capabilities you would be interested in. And you'd look and determine what kind of, of playback capability it has, and based on that, you might put a different version of the video out there using either the WMV file or the MP4 or so on. We can see that there's a whole lot of these properties. And you absolutely won't, in any case, in any project that I can think of, be interested in too many of them or all of them. But you have that capability to query and ask for it, all right, if you want it. And then you can customize based on that, all right? When we look at the example that is in the book, We'll go over and we'll, we'll see. I, I, I can't remember, um, I'll have to figure out if I want to actually do the example that's in the book or if I want to do it a, a similar example. All right, But we'll see this a little bit more in practice on how we can look at a handful of properties that we're interested in and come up with several buckets to put all our devices in and do, do one thing or the other verse, uh, depending on, on what bucket the device fall, falls into. Other questions? All right. So, to get this going, what do you need to do? Well, again, I've set it up on our web server, and before you have any assignments, you'll have an account. Before you have any assignments that use Werfel, you'll have an account on it. They mention it's a key internet components is Facebook and Google. There's a dual licensing scheme. Well, no, they, they have an option. Uh, you have an option. Of course, all code linked to the Workflow API is made available under a uh, compatible <coughs> FOSS license. And I am not 100% sure what that means. The point is, is you have the ability to either do the free version or, or that, depending on your organization. There's conditions for the free version, but there's also a commercial license available. All right. And there's also something called Werfel Cloud, which again is available at varying prices, blah, blah, blah. <coughs> Developers, hobbyists, and micro companies may find the free cloud offering sufficient for their need. Um, this, I have a feeling, is a newer um, thing. I don't remember. Don't 
don't re um, I, I think what this is telling you is with the free version you can query two capabilities and you can do it 5,000 times. For $10 a month you get five capabilities and you can do it 50,000 times and so on down the line. Let's do the uh, 10 million detections. 10 million detections, yeah. yeah. We don't ship in, it's only 500 right. a month. Right. Now the, the benefit of doing this on the cloud, of course, would be what? What would be the benefit of using the cloud version as opposed to the other version? You don't have to keep the files on your server. You don't have to keep the files on your server. And what else do you not have to do to the files on your server? Right. Keep them updated. <laughs> right. So. Actually, initializing it is one thing, keeping updated is another one. Um, for example, I don't remember when I loaded this, uh, Werfel. It was probably either at this point last year at this time, or approximately the sixth week of spring semester last year. So how many mobile devices have come out since then? You know, five trillion, approximately, give or take. All right, so therefore, that Werfel database, I'm sure, is out of date, and I'm sure there's updates to it. Uh, the, the benefit of the cloud anything is that we don't have to go and uh, keep it updated. Um, if we're reviewing, though, what we have to do, Werfel on site, again, you know, that gives you more control. You're not at the, at the mercy of them <coughs> if their servers go down or whatever. But you have to download, all right, the APIs, which is the set of functions, is some of the code that I was showing you. You have to download that XML file, and you have to set up your configuration file so that everything can talk to everyone else. So that's what you need to do uh, for that. Again, when we do this, uh, um, as an assignment, you'll have an account on our server, so you won't need to go through the, the pain of installing it. Um, it was a little tricky, if I remember right, getting it installed and configured right. Um, that is, how do I want to say it? That is one of the big trade-offs. If I'm comparing, if I'm comparing what a developer today needs to do with what developers maybe when I first started in the business have to do. All right. The good news is that there's a lot of components that are already built and you just have to hook into them. That's the good news. Old school developers did everything themselves. All right, did everything themselves. All right, they were clever. Maybe they could get some, maybe they could create their own little libraries, but old school developers pretty much developed everything on their own. The problem with this component-based architecture where you have a little piece that does this, a little piece that does that, is you got to make sure everything's talking to each other right. And therefore, you're going to do some programming, but you're also going to need to make sure stuff is configured right, stuff is set up right. And that, again, is one of those things where, like, on a good day, that's not that big a deal, right? If you uh, aren't running some kind of weird version of the server software or you're using a pretty good, reliable product, then installing and configuring it might not be that big of a headache, or it can be a massive headache. Um, I remember working on a WebSphere uh, project years ago, and it was the same thing. WebSphere has this great capabilities and did a lot of stuff for you, but most of our time was making sure the configuration was right as opposed to actual programming, make sure things were talking to each other right. So that's kind of the trade-off. Um, in this class, again, we're going to make it easy by, by doing, uh, by, by giving you the, the, the server uh, with it already installed and, and, and help you set up the configuration. Now, um, your next assignment I posted earlier today is actually a two-week assignment. All right. What I'd like you to do is expand on your, I think it's week five, a 